Now here we are with our weekly SAT question. A cube has an edge length of 68 inches. A solid sphere with a radius of 34 inches is inside the cube such that the sphere touches the center of each face of the cube. To the nearest cubic inch, what is the volume of the space in the cube not taken up by the sphere? And so we have our traditional four answer choices. Before we get into what our actual solution is, let's look at your results. And you can see there is a very clear winner here. Just a whisker over 80% of us thought that the answer choice was A, which is in fact the correct answer. Our runner-up answer choice D at 9.4%. It's not even, even close, but it is the second place winner here. And answer choice D, as we will see, is the one that you would probably eliminate first. And we'll see that whenever we uh, work through our specific solution. Before we do that, let's look at your difficulty rating. Most of us believe that this skewed heavily towards being an easy question, especially for question number 22. Uh, easy to medium where a handful, just a small handful of us thought that it was a hard question. So let's get into the actual solution here, which has to do with volume. And it's not even that you had to figure out that it was volume. They explicitly said the volume of the space. Okay, so this does involve a cube. And probably one of the toughest things that would be about this question, if you were taking this in a real life situation, is do you remember the volume of a cube formula? Well, SAT has you covered. So at the start of your math section, there is a little formula chart. And that formula chart, it put an image on the main SAT page here. And that formula chart includes the volume formula of, of the sphere. As you can see, it's the 4 thirds pi r cubed. But you probably already had that memorized. Anyway, it doesn't have the volume of a cube on it, which is okay. If you don't remember it, a side cube, you could use this rectangular prism here with length, width, and height being the same S, S, S kind of business. All right, so as a matter of fact, I'm going to steal this picture here. I'm going to use it as the basis of my diagram for us visual learners. Not that you have to draw a picture for this. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I was in your position taking this question, this thing would be 100% calculator active. I'd just throw all of it into the calculator in one go. But let's go ahead and draw a picture of this using actually my little formula chart here so let me uh, scale this picture down because i don't want all of this all these other distractions i'll even leave the formula there we go very nice and what i'm going to do is a very convincing job of making a cube to surround this thing now it's got to be kind of at an angle at a tilt because i'm drawing it in perspective to make this convincing three-dimensional illusion sort of like this okay and then on the back side of this cube i kind of have to dash a little bit there we go and now if i connect these corners you can almost see it popping off the page now additionally it says that our sphere touches the center of each of these faces so it looks like this so it's supposed to be touching at each one of these little center points right there. And you can see the way I drew it. It's dead center, right? All right, what the question's asking is not for the volume of the cube, not for the volume of the sphere, but instead the volume of everything else, all the space in between the two of them. It's almost as if we fill this thing with water, and we want to know how much water is going to take up the remaining space inside the box, all right? Now, this is the most fun part of this whole entire thing, and that is getting to color all of this extra space. Okay, give me a second. Don't you fast forward that video. Okay, there we go. Nice. Oh my gosh, it looks so convincing. It almost looks like this thing is sitting in the corner of a room because it's gotten into trouble. Um, all right, now... As far as finding the actual solution here, it is there, there's not a specific formula for the space around uh, in between the sphere and the cube. Instead, you're just subtracting volumes. You're going to take the difference between the volume of the cube and the volume of the sphere. 
And we just need a quantity, just one little quantity, and that can solve the whole entire thing for us. And that's the edge length of our uh, of our cube, which is 68 inches. It also gives us 34 inches for the radius, but we didn't quite need that. Uh, before I move on here, um, this whole fact about our cube touching our sphere at just one single point here, there's a word for that. This word comes up quite a bit in mathematics. That word is tangent. And tangent just simply means when a surface or a line touches a curve at one point. And we'll talk about that this year in geometry. And it is a, a central concept, actually, in a branch of mathematics that maybe you've heard of. And that is calculus. Anyway, so that in itself was a bit of a tangent. So uh, finding the volume of our cube, we were just talking that talking about that that is just the side length cube. That's a very straightforward S cubed, 68 cube. And for our volume of our sphere, it is 4 thirds pi. And if they didn't give us, if they did not give us the actual radius, we would know that the radius of our sphere should be exactly half of the size of the edge length here. So half of that 68, that radius should be equal to 34. But they did give it to us. Very nice of them. Anyway, so I'm going to stick that 34 in there. And then cube that guy. And as I as I was talking about before, like the picture, it's extra. It's just visual to make this video look a little bit prettier. Also, I wouldn't write down all of this stuff. If I was in your position and I was doing this problem, I would go straight to my Desmos calculator and I'd start some typing. And maybe I would even put this calculator side by side the question so that I can make sure that I don't mistype the numbers. Okay, so... I'm going to start off with our 68 and then cube that guy. And you can see that I've got a little bit over 300,000. So 314, 432. I'm going to write that down, write that down briefly. So 314432. And the only really reason, really reason, the only real reason I'm writing that down is so that you can see why I would come back over here to our answer choices and go, nah, D, not picking you because this one is the one that's closest to the actual volume of the whole entire cube. I still have to take away the volume of the sphere, and I find it highly doubtful that the volume of the sphere that we're about to subtract away is only about 4,000. So this one seems to be an approximation of the volume of the cube, and that one goes away. All right, so we still have to subtract out our volume of our sphere. I'm going to do this on the next line. Not that you would do it on two different lines. You can do this all in one go for sure. So 4 thirds, multiply this times pi. I'm going to use the pi key. However, if you look at your answer choices, look how far apart they are. There's no way that 3.14, the difference between that and the actual pi, calc uh, pi key, which is a lot more precise, is going to contribute significantly to your actual answer that you would miss one of these answer choices. So if you use 3.14 instead of pi, even though Archimedes is probably rolling over in his tomb, um, nobody else is going to actually care. Anyway, let me uh, throw in our 34 and then cube that guy to the third power. And this one turns out to be about 164,000 and stuff. So minus 164, 636 point stuff. And if I look at my answer choices, I think that eliminates another one. I think that eliminates answer choice B because this seems approximately what the volume of the sphere is. So I'm left with just two of these answer choices here. And whenever I go ahead and do my subtraction, I, once again, I, I would have just done this on one complete line, sort of like this. So 68 cubed, and then minus, let me get out of that exponent, and then minus the actual volume of the sphere. And rather than me type it in again, I'm just going to hit this ANS button, which is the previous answer that's on there. And we can see that we have a volume of approximately 149,000. 795.7, so I'm going to round that to 96 cubic inches. Don't forget your units, folks, to get full credit. 
Um, anyway, so when I look at that answer choice, it is a very clear answer choice A. Okay, this guy can go away. Don't need it anymore. Uh, where did answer choice C come from? Not entirely sure. Uh, maybe this is an answer choice you could have gotten by doing some arithmetic uh, error, maybe mistyping in a digit or something like that. But it's a very clear winner here with this answer choice A. I mean, look, it is absolutely dead on when we use our pi key instead of using the 3.14. Whenever we rounded it to the nearest cubic inch. Now, I'm going to extend this just a little bit. I'm going to make this a little bit more interesting, I think, for this little extension. And what I believe is a, a little bit more of an interesting question here is, is like, how much does the sphere actually fill the cube? In other words, like what is the ratio of the volume of the sphere to the cube? And maybe I think it's about half full, or maybe I think it's a little bit more or less than half. So for example, if, if this was the volume of the, of the cube, if I took half of it, is that going to be more or less than the volume of the sphere that's fitting inside of it? So, I mean, I could use the numbers that are up here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this so that it, I can show that it's going to be exactly the same no matter what the size of the edge length. Instead of using 68, I'm going to use some general argument in terms of some variables here, right? And so really what this is asking here is like, what is the ratio of the volumes? And I'm going to do specifically the volume of the sphere on top, sphere, over the cube. Not using the radius lengths that they gave us, but instead using the actual formulas here, which is 4 thirds and a pi and an r cubed. And on the bottom, it's just side cubed. And at first glance, there's not a whole lot that you can do with this. However, there's a pretty clear relationship between S and R whenever the sphere fits nicely inside of the cube so that each one of the faces of the cube are tangent to the sides, are tangent to the, uh, the sphere. And that relationship is that this radius here is exactly half of the size of this edge length. I'm going to write that down. So I'm going to say that the radius is equal to one half of the side length. So now, it, as far as plugging this into the formula, I could, I could plug that by substitution, the one half s in right up here. But I think it's actually easier to do the algebra if I solve this thing for s. I'm going to multiply the two over to the other side. So I'm going to make 2r is equal to s. And this should also make sense to you that if I count up two of these radii, that would be the same length as the edge length of this cube here. And I think this substitution is going to make this a lot cleaner, a little bit easier of a problem. So if I come down here, I'm going to take the S out of the bottom, and I'm going to replace it with my two R's. So I'll just do that little substitution here and then simplify from there. So 4 thirds pi R cubed, and then on the bottom, it's 2r in parentheses cubed. So now let's cube the bottom. The top will stay the same. And then I'm going to have 8r cubed on the bottom. And then you can see, oh, wow, these little r cubes, they cancel each other out. And the numbers, well, they, some of the numbers do simplify a little bit. In order to see that, let me just kind of rewrite this. Because it is a division problem, right? Remember that a fraction bar means top divided by the bottom. And if I write this as a traditional division problem, this would look like 4 thirds pi divided by 8. And when I'm taking a fraction and dividing it by a number, I turn this into a multiplication problem. I multiply by the reciprocal, which you would have learned in another class as keep, change, and flip. And now we can see that we're going to get a bit of a cancellation here. And that is the 4 goes into the 8 exactly two times. And whenever I go to 
uh, multiply this out to have a fully simplified answer. This pi that I have that's just kind of sitting off right by the fraction bar, it's essentially on the top. It's as if this is a pi over 1. And when you multiply all your tops together, it's just going to be, well, what, what's supposed to be here on this 4? Whenever you cancel it out, it left a 1, an implied 1, but nobody ever writes it down. We got a 1 times a pi times another 1. That's just pi. And then on the bottom, we have a 3 times a 1 times a 2, which is going to give us a 6. It's exactly pi over 6. So the ratio of the sphere, the volume of the sphere, compared to the volume of the cube that it fits inside is exactly pi over 6. All right, we don't usually think in terms of numbers like pi over 6. What we like to do is we like to turn these things into a percentage so I can see what percent it is actually filled up. And the word percent means that it's some number out of 100. And essentially what you're doing when you're converting something into a percent is that you're solving yourself a proportion. It looks like this. Pi over 6 is equal to some number out of 100. And this number x is our percentage. In order to solve this for x, all you got to do really is just multiply this 100 over here. So traditionally what we do is we divide our, our fraction, we divide our ratio, and then we go, oh yeah, I'm supposed to move that decimal place two spaces to the right. And the reason why that's happening is because you're multiplying your decimal by 100. Let's go ahead and pull up our calculator and do that calculation. There we go. Go to the next line. I'm going to do a pi divided by 6, and then multiply that whole quantity times 100. And you can see that I'm getting somewhere around 52%. So this is about 52%. This means that the sphere takes up a little bit more than half of the volume of the cube. And our question, the one that the SAT was actually asking, is basically the complement of that. And the complement of that just takes the difference between that and 100, which is about 48%. A little bit less than half is the extra blue volume that's around here, like the water that I was talking about before. All right, well, that should conclude not only the solution but also, you know, for monetary reasons, extending this off to the 20 minute mark by extending it to like trying to generalize it with how full is that box with the sphere?